Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Linode. I've used them now for the last eight years for my business's websites. I've created websites in PHP, Node, Python, tons of different stuff. And uh, anything that runs on Linux is gonna work on Linode. They have pricing points that are available pretty much for everybody as low as $5 a month for plenty more resources than you'll get with Azure or AWS. Uh, but if you wanna do something a little bit more involved, they also have these dedicated CPU plans as well. So make sure you guys give them a look. The link is in the description tab below. All right, so this is a follow-up to my only way to learn JavaScript video. This is somewhat opinionated as well, but I think when it comes to CSS that there is a specific way that you need to go about learning it. There's no tutorial series out there or book that's gonna make you an expert CSS developer slash UI. This is something that there's just no shortcuts to. You have to actually put in the work and the repetition and you have to build things and as you start building things and you realize where your struggles are with positioning and all that stuff, it all just starts coming together with more practice and repetition. But this video is mostly about how do you actually go about it the right way. So for starters, if you don't know what CSS is, it stands for Cascading Style Sheets. I'm not going to try to bore anybody here, but it basically styles and polishes our websites with colors, with positioning and everything else. And when you combine that with HTML, the skeletal structure of the website, along with JavaScript to do dynamic uh, removing and, and uh, hiding, showing elements, uh, such uh, things like that, then uh, th that brings together all the UI that you need to know these days. So uh, you have to have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript if you're going to be a web programmer, and there's really no way around that. This is going to focus on just CSS. Now, one of the things I do want to mention is that a lot of people will ask about like libraries. So similar to my JavaScript video where I talked about the fact that jQuery used to be the way that we wrote JavaScript, um, CSS, when Bootstrap came along in roughly 2012, this is when responsive websites were at a craze. Like uh, everybody decided, oh, we could use media queries and make our design adapt to a mobile friendly view. And to this day, we still do that. But most people didn't understand how to write CSS. And uh, they just relied on a project like Bootstrap, which is really just a bunch of CSS written by somebody else. So just like with JavaScript and React, Bootstrap can almost be considered the same thing with CSS. It's a library written on top of CSS. It's a bunch of already written code uh, that you interact with. The problem with just downloading a library like Bootstrap or Materialize or any other popular CSS library is that you're not truly understanding how to write low-level CSS for yourself. So if we fast forward to 20, uh, 2019, I think that really the only thing that you should do is download Node.js, install it on your machine so that you can use the package manager that comes with it because there is one tool that you should be using in this day and age right now to write your CSS, and that is SAS, but it's not difficult to set up. SAS has been around for a long time, but literally for the first five years that I had even heard of it, I had dabbled with it a few times, and because I considered myself a, a, you know, close to being a CSS expert, I felt like I didn't really need SAS in order to write my CSS. But when I look at the way, uh, really what SAS provides, I think that, that it is a, a, uh, a tool that everybody should be utilizing because it is very easy to set up. So if you have Node.js installed on your machine, it's very easy. You just need to go ahead and write your code into something. I'll use Visual Studio Code, which is another free product. Here I have my project open up uh, to a folder called CSS. So I'm gonna open this in the terminal. And if you have node installed, you should be able to type node and it should like pull up the command prompt or control uh, C to exit out of that. And hopefully you guys can see this. I can try to make it a little bigger for you. All right, let's close that off. All right, so um, if you guys can see this, hopefully you can. What we're gonna do is go ahead and install SAS. So what we're gonna use is NPM, which comes with node. So we're gonna say NPM install hyphen G for global so that you only have to install it one time and you can reference it anywhere. And you're just gonna say NPM install hyphen G SAS. And that's all you need to do in order to get SAS up and running. Well, not exactly. It's, it's what you need to do in order to get it installed. And then there's going to be one extra command that we're actually going to do to actually run SAS. All right. So to make this as easy as possible, let's go ahead and create a new file. We're going to call it index.html. There's going to be a standard HTML document. Like I said, this is the skeleton of the web. Every page to have a title. And we'll just leave it at that. All right, and then let's go ahead and have our body tag. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put a link to our style sheet that we're gonna create. So it's a relation style sheet. That's what these little attributes are for. And then we have to have an href, which is just pointing to where is the CSS gonna be 
uh, we'll just call it main.css. So we, we don't have that created yet, but this is gonna load main.css. And um, let's go ahead and just have a uh, hello world title here. And now let's go ahead and create our main SAS file. So we want the, the SAS file to be the same name as our CSS. And this is all just, uh, once you do this a few times, it's gonna become very easy to do. Um, but you just need to go ahead and do the initial setup because I, I'm telling you the benefits of that are gonna be uh, really astronomical if you're gonna be a web developer. And also it's what companies are really looking for these days. All right, so what you should know about SAS is that it is not actually CSS. It's very similar to CSS, but it's not, it's not CSS. So we need to turn our SAS file to CSS, and that's what we actually installed SAS for. So in order to compile this main.scss file and create our main SAS file or CSS file, then we just have to say SAS, and then you give it the name of the file that you want to compile, which is main.scss, and then you give it an out file. So we're going to say main.css is our out, and then we're gonna do hyphen hyphen watch so that we don't have to continue to uh, run this every time we make a change. So you can see that this CSS is being created for us. And if I wanted to just, I'll put a P tag in here and make it the color of pound 333, which is like a light gray. And inside here, let's go ahead and take a look at, um, this is gray, gray text. Is it gray or gray? It's like that, gray text. I've never understood the difference between that. All right, so to see our changes here, let's just go ahead and right click, say reveal and explore. Um, so it'll pull up a, an explorer to my CSS folder that I have. Uh, and here you can see it. So if I just double click on the index file, Chrome is gonna open it uh, automatically here. So you can see that we're getting our CSS that is being compiled for us. Now that is literally the best way to write CSS. And if you wanted to go and learn how to, to use SAS, it really would only take you a couple of days probably um, of understanding some of the basic things like variables and and how nesting works but it, this is all going to be through repetition and practice so really don't just go off of this and read it one thing after another I want to go ahead and just sh show you some fundamental things that you need to know about CSS and then once you start advancing on your own uh, things are going to make much more sense now let's look at what we got going on here we have all our h1s here and normally a page should only have one h1 so for now just because I want to be very uh, technical here let's just have this be an h2 since uh, we're not going to like uh, break any sort of coding standards now what what happens if I have another title like hello so I have another header here hello mother so now the problem that I I see in something like this is that we basically just defined a global style we said any h2s in our document are going to have this color red but what, what if you didn't want all of them to have the color red how do you handle that sort of thing and that's where you need to look to nesting and that's something that SAS makes easier than just regular CSS so in this particular example let's just go ahead and say you know what we want this first h2 to be red and I want this second one to be blue all right so there's multiple ways of doing that a lot of times people use classes right so if I wanted to have a specific class I could say you know what let's put a class on here and class equals we'll just say heading uh, and, and like a color like gray like that right all right so now that we have that defined we can go ahead and be a little bit more specific now so we can create that that class and we can say heading gray and we're going to change this to also be pound three through three right this is also where you could use a variable so you could define a color variable in sas and use that over again but i'm not going to get into all that right now uh, but this will now have the first header be a, a, a color it'll be red and the second one will be gray by giving an explicit meaning a specific style class name uh, really giving a specific class that has specific color to it uh, to that heading but that's not the best way to write CSS in many ways uh, in many cases anyway all right so if we take a look at what we have going on here we achieved what we wanted to we wanted that first one to be red and this next one to be uh, gray but that's not actually how you should write your CSS when it comes to nesting there's a few things that you want to keep in mind so the best way to handle nesting really is to have some sort of container, parent type container that is going to wrap a bunch of elements and then you use nesting to actually apply style to, to those elements. So in this example, if I were to say, you know what, let me have a gray container and I'm just gonna define that here. And if I go ahead and I wrap this inside my class gray container, and then I'm gonna have anything that I want to be gray inside this container. 
And by doing that, I can now say, I can just drill, di drill down on this parent. And I look at the, I start with the parent. So this is gonna be the outer wrapper, this parent. And then I can say, you know what? Any P tags that you have inside of you, I want uh, to be that gray. And also I can be a little bit more generic as well. Instead of having to come up with my own class to assign to that H2, I could say, you know what? I just want all H2 headers that are inside of this that have the parent of gray container to have this gray color. So I started drilling down on something like that. So now I can get rid of this. And so the power of nesting allows me to make my CSS much more compact and concise. And this gray container is specifically overriding this global H2 up here for any sort of uh, H2s that, are, that, that have this parent. And when you look at like, okay, parent, it could also be grandparents too. So let me, let me show you real quick. So here you can see we removed the style um, or the class name from our H2 header, but we still get that, that style that's being, um, that, that we declared through the parent, it's still being applied. And the reason why uh, this also applies to grandparents as well, I'm just gonna show you a demo of that is that if I were to go in and say, you know what, um, I'm gonna have another div inside of here, and it's just gonna be some standard div. Say I had a different class name or something, like it could have its own class, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I know the formatting's a little bit off, that's, uh, that's fine. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. So even though there's this second child, so gray container now has this div child, then it's still going to work though. So you can see that the gray, that we applied to the H2, it's, it still applies. So even though it, it like the H2 is now not a direct child of the gray container, it's still going to get that through CSS cascading rules through this nesting. Nesting is something that's difficult to, to, to wrap your head around for a beginner CSS developers. But let me show you what's going on here. This is the way you would write CSS if you didn't have SAS. You could write this out to say, you know what, gray container, any sort of H2 that, you're, that, that you have next to you, it has to have a space between this first rule and this second rule, right? So th th this, first, this first rule right here uh, is and then a space, and then it's saying any H2s that it contains inside of it as uh, descendants. So really, there's a lot to, to wrap your head around there. I think that... Um, this is a it's a difficult thing to do to explain to somebody else but the only way you're going to get better at this is actually to just build this out yourself write the rules yourself and if you have time i would recommend that you just use sas since it's going to write the css correctly for you and it's easier to write it in sas when it creates this um versus having to actually like spell all this out this is this is much easier here uh, at least i think i think the curly braces kind of show you the the nested hierarchy much easier than having everything in line like this, because what if I said, you know what, uh, any H2 that has a span inside of it, um, then then this would now apply. So let's just say, um, you know, and now I'm editing the CSS file, which is really bad. But let's just say, you know what, um, we're we're only going to have this apply to the span. So if I went ahead and I put a span inside of here, we're going to span just the hello part of this and leave the mother. So now, um, because we didn't override the H2 with a different color, the color is gonna, mother is gonna be red and span is gonna be gray. So let's take a look and you can see. All right, so the next biggest thing besides nesting when you're t dealing with uh, children, so some sort of outer element that you're, you're drilling down on and then saying everything that's inside of you that is this, this, and this has this style. The next thing to figure out is what happens when you lump styles together on um like this gray container what if i were to say uh i add this blue right now in sas if i wanted to say inside the gray container if i wanted to say if it has the additional blue on there i don't do it in a nested way like this i, I can't say uh blue like that because that's only going to apply to classes that are children of the container so how do you actually say you know what gray container if you also have the class name blue I want you to behave differently. So we could do that by saying and dot blue. And this says if you did, you know, have two classes assigned to one element, they're always going to be separated by spaces. So now we have two separate classes applied to one element. And what we can do is now say sass 
anytime you have this blue here, we're gonna go ahead and override the H2 and we're gonna make that color blue. All right, so you can see that you get a lot of control over nesting. Uh, really, you get drilled down full control over how you style a page via nesting and also grouping classes together. So this is like grouping classes together and these are nested classes. And although they're not really classes, they're, they're styles uh, on those specific elements. I, I can't really underestimate the fact that CSS is a pain in the ass, that it's going to take you a long time to learn. It took me years to, to get really good at it. But the only way you're going to do it fast is if you just simply start building stuff and do it yourself. No book, you can't read a book and just learn this crap. And you can't even watch a tutorial and just learn this crap. You need to just learn how to get started and just start rolling with it. With CSS, though, there's a few things that you want to pay attention to after you look at nesting, which I've already showed you, and then grouping classes together uh, and how you drill down on that. There is the box model, which consists of margins, borders, and padding. Padding is the space from the border on the inside. Margin is the space on the outside of the border. So those little concepts can be very difficult for people to understand, but margins and paddings definitely have a difference. You need to understand uh, paddings will actually increase the overall width of your DOM elements that you're actually uh, adding padding to. So those types of little gotchas are, are things that you have to kind of learn on your own. Um, if you go to W3 Schools, which isn't the best site, I don't think, uh, but there's uh, plenty of CSS stuff in here. I would just go through the W3C tutorial with your SAS code and do every single, single example there and then make sure you understand the nesting and grouping and then branch off from there. Once you get really good, you probably don't want to write a bunch of CSS from scratch, and that's why you use a library like Bootstrap or Materialize uh, or something along those lines because there's a bunch more besides that now. Um, but it's really just a bunch of CSS that's already been written for you. The problem with beginners and people that don't know CSS that use these libraries is they have no idea how to override the rules um, and the overriding of rules is so easy when it comes to um, you know once you understand how to nest something oh I can just wrap it in a parent class and drill down and and uh, and just deliver my overriding CSS um, we've seen it here uh, and again you're only gonna get better just through practice so just uh, continue to do that guys hopefully you guys like this video let me know what you think make sure you subscribe I appreciate all the support and I hope everybody has a good day take care bye